Hello, Star Wars fans, and welcome to the first official episode of Crate Dragon Talk, um, where for, with Star Wars Audio Comics, we like to go behind the scenes and talk to the voice actors and editors and other people who have worked with us to make these uh, comics to come to life. And I'm Daniel. I'll be your host today. And with me today for our first guest is Darth Vader himself, Kevin Urban. How you go? How's it going, Kevin? It is going good. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's good. It's good to be here. Um, I've I've been. This has been one of the funnest experiences of my um, my YouTube uh, sort of my content creator. Uh, journey i'm a huge star wars fan and this um this really allows all of us you know we're all huge star wars fans this allows us to be sort of part of that so thank you for having me tonight yeah for sure and thank you for sticking with uh being vader for us for all these years since what 2000 2016 it's been that long yeah <laughs> i'm technically no, um i'm technically the second vader is that correct yeah that's right yeah um the first one he just kind of stopped responding on casting call and um yes <laughs> good old casting but, uh, call uh casting call club communication i love it <laughs> yeah yeah and what's was a uh, let's see i'm trying to remember did did i find you through there also I think, uh, I think so. I definitely had an account in 2016, um, but I had also recently, I was in school at the time, and they had just um, overhauled the audio labs, and I did the um, I Am Your Father scene, sort of. I wanted to test out the audio equipment, and I think it might have also been YouTube. Yeah, you know, I I might have found you through YouTube. Yeah, he's like, oh, this guy's doing Darth Vader, <laughs> and he sounds great. I'm gonna contact him. Yeah, I was really, so. um, I was Battlefront was the game to play. I think the original like next gen Battlefront, and I was trying to see how close I could get to the Matt Sloan performance. Um, with the effects included so it was like a weird mix of james earl jones and the video game voice so this was the oh, perfect yeah. opportunity this is the perfect opportunity um the audio comics nice yeah no 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 shade to uh matt sloan or anything but uh <laughs> i definitely prefer i prefer your vader <laughs> well thank you thank <laughs> you i appreciate that yeah, it's interesting i yeah, I, I think he, I think like he he was I think he was Vader in the Force Unleashed. Started with the Force Unleashed but, and um, was the main video game Vader voice for a few years until um, Scott Lawrence uh, retook the reins back. Um, I I think it was for um, one of the more recent video games, and now it's like. Vader is kind of a revolving door for those two actors. Oh, so they're still like going back and forth. Yeah. He does a lot of like the Lego stuff and like the more kiddie stuff. But when a direct, when it's not for a movie and they need someone who's a bit more, and this isn't even talking about the Reese feature stuff that they did for Obi-Wan. Um, they go to Scott Lawrence, who's a bit more accurate overall to the original trilogy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's right. He does. Uh, there's Scott Lawrence. What's the other guy's name? Oh, Matt Sloan. Matt yeah. Sloan and Scott Lawrence. Yeah, Matt Sloan's more of like the... Did he do um, Vader in... Uh... Oh, damn, what's it called? Uh... Robot he, Chicken? I think he I think he might have. Um it, it was either him or 
Robot Chicken has um, like a rotation of, I, I don't know the guy's name. Um, he does a lot of like, he does a lot of voices. So I know Mark Hamill did yeah. Robot Chicken as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and again, for Matt Sloan, I, I did think Matt Sloan sat in better in Force Unleashed, but anyway. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so let's see. Um, how do you, like, approach voicing Vader? And like you said, you try, you first started trying to do, you know, a mix of James Earl Jones and Matt Sloan. Um, do you just try to, like, do you try to do, like, a one-for-one, one, you know, like, impersonation of James Earl Jones as Vader, or you kind of try to do, like, your own thing with it, or what do you what do you like to do? Um, it's changed over the years. Um, when I first started, it was definitely just, I was trying to be a pitch for pitch sort of sound alike, um, to James Earl Jones and to Matt Sloan. I didn't really have any acting. Well, I did. I had performed on stage. I had done, you know, live shows and all that, but actual um, voice acting experience, I just tried to be as accurate to the show as to the movies as possible. Um, over the last few years, as I've taken um, more dramatic acting classes and, um, you know, sort of got honed my craft a little bit, I tried to, I really try to bring my own flavor to it. Um, especially with the, I, I was telling you before we started, um, Vader six, we, that came out at the end of May and it was Darth Vader versus the grand inquisitor. Um, I oh, really, I listened to a couple clips on YouTube beforehand. Um, but I really wanted to take everything I've learned over the last five or six years and, I wanted to make Vader sound kind of angry. I wanted him to be emotional. Um, we don't get a lot of that in the official stuff. So the, the, the comic dubs and the fan, you know, the, the stuff that we've done over the years, I, this is a chance to explore that more. The few times that Anakin kind of bleeds into Vader, that's the stuff I like playing. I like sort of dramatizing that. Yeah, I like that because, yeah, the, the Vader 20, 2017 comics is like fresh Vader. Like he's he's just become Vader. So it makes sense that he sounds more emotional. But then by the time you get to the original trilogy, you know, he's more composed and in control of, you know, his of the dark side, I guess, and all that. Yeah, he um, that James Earl Jones, that regality that formality that actually he kind of walks that line throughout the entire original trilogy um he very rarely shows that intensity that we know from the prequels yeah which is in, yeah and uh, it's interesting oh, uh, sorry. oh sorry i wanted to just um it's i wonder if for Obi-Wan because Reese Beecher with I won't talk too much about the AI stuff but I wonder if it was Hayden Christensen because they can put the James Earl Jones that AI they can put that AI over anything and kind of make it sound like it's actually him from the original trilogy I wonder if Hayden recorded any lines and then they put the James Earl Jones AI right over it. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if I read something or maybe I just listened to a podcast where they were suspecting that, but yeah, I feel like they might've done that. Yeah. And that would be, that adds like a whole new sort of metal layer. Like I, I'm not a huge fan of AI, but Darth Vader is like the one character. It kind of works because he he's a cyborg 
So I feel like that adds that meta, that meta ness, that more that it it combines the original trilogy and the prequels a lot more seamlessly. Yeah, I, I agree. Like with the whole like, I I definitely prefer you know real voice actors over AI. But as far as Vader, like it really does work for him, like you said, and also he's got the He's got, you know, the the helmet filter right. on there, too, which adds, yeah, makes it more believable. I re- Not to say that, you know, somebody couldn't voice Vader, but I don't know, it does work for, like, the live action stuff. Do you, do you like that? Like, do you th- wish they would do the Reese feature all the time or just have, you know, like a Scott Lawrence do it, maybe? I, I really hope that a human is still involved. Um, AI is sadly, it's not going anywhere. Um, It's here to stay. So as long as Disney, I just saw um, the new Indiana Jones. It sounded like they might've used Harrison, like a younger sounding Harrison Ford AI model for the flashback sequences. So it's here to stay. Um, if if that is the case, I hope that a professionally trained voice actor, even after James, because James Earl Jones is uh, retired now, um, I still hope Scott Lawrence is still involved to still bring that human element to it. And then the final touch is the AI, um, the AI, uh, you know, mask. Because the AI, as it stands, just cannot replicate that human emotion. And Vader does have emotion. It's subtle, but it's still there. And if you're just typing in uh, lines into a text-to-speech program, like Respeecher or whatever, you know, the human humans are pretty good at detecting fakeness. Um, I know some YouTube commenters probably beg to differ on that, but we can tell when something is fake, Um, which is why over the years I've tried to dramatize the performance a little bit more so that it's not just, you know, I'm a five, eight guy from Massachusetts. I'm not James Earl Jones. I, my impression looking, I'm listening to some of those old videos I used to do. um, You know, it doesn't sound good to me at all. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So that's why I just hope whatever the case may be, um, there's still the human performance that's still um, acting as the base. Yeah, right. When you do, I'm curious as well. So when you direct, because we all have, everyone has a favorite, um, you know, so many different actors have portrayed Vader and not just Vader, other Star Wars characters over the years. Um, the channel has gotten a lot bigger. And now that it's sort of gotten to um, a point where a lot of people have a lot of different opinions, when you're directing the voice actors or when you're choosing the final takes, do you, what is most important to you? Yeah, so, yeah, see, that's the thing. Um, It's not always just about um, making sure, you know, they sound exactly like uh, Mark Hamill, for example, which is really hard, by the way. Um, I don't think anybody sounds exactly like Mark Hamill for our Luke's, but, uh, (laughs) but, uh, yeah, so, like, it's more so, like, you know, uh, they're portraying the emotion and the, kind of like the um, maturity level. Well, for Luke, for example, just for example, but yeah, for any character, just like make it like, I like to cast people that really feel like the character. Maybe they're not, they're not like a one for one, you know, uh, copy of the character, but like they, they really, you know, as, if it convinces me and like, it sounds like, yeah, that, that sounds like that character, like, I could see this 
person voicing, you know, in, in like a, an animated show or something like that character, then that's kind of what I go for more. That makes sense. And someone like Mark Hamill, whose voice has definitely, because he's a voice actor, he's used his voice a lot. Um, it has definitely changed over the decades. So finding, I think it's good that, especially for characters like that, you're not looking for that one-for-one -one recreation because we really only have the original trilogy to base it off of, and there's been so much more Luke media since the OG trilogy came out. So I think it's it's good that you go for the essence of the character ver versus the recreation. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's interesting, like, you know, for the Mandalorian, they, they seem like against just getting someone to do the voice of, of Luke. Like, that's not just an AI. Um, <laughs> mm. I, I, and I get why they're like, I get, I get why they're like, you know, um, apprehensive to do that kind of thing. Um, cause like nobody's going to sound exactly like Mark Hamill. I mean, I don't know, maybe Hollywood can find someone who's really good, you know, yeah. Mark Hamill impersonation, but yeah, I don't know. It's kind of like, I mean, I get what they're going for, but also it's like, it doesn't sound, I mean, like you said, I can tell it's not real. So I don't know. It's very flat. So for the AI, it's, you need hours and hours of the sound you're trying to recreate. Um, young Mark Hamill, sure, they have unused footage, deleted scenes from the OG trilogy. They probably have some voiceover performances for like movies that he's done from the era that they probably... Yeah stitch and steal from or not steal i'm sure disney finds a way to legally claim it as their own um yeah. but if you don't have enough it will not get that cadence that musicality that all speech has that all human speech has um and vo his voice has changed so much it he sounded so young in the original trilogy and e by even by the nineties, it had matured and maybe he just some vocal damage had happened. He sounded very, a lot huskier, a lot. Uh, it, it just sounded different, almost like, okay, this is a very different version of Luke versus what we're used to from empire where he's just kind of young and, clueless not clueless but yeah. more just more just younger yeah very inexperienced versus the hardened jedi he he's in like the sequels yeah um what was good to say oh i just lost uh Oh yeah, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. So yeah, I would say like, so I get why they don't like wanna do it for the live action, but my number one like wish for Star Wars, the content of anything is just to get like a, you know, like an animated series like the Clone Wars that's like shortly after Return of the Jedi. Cause I would just love to see, you know, Han, Luke and Leia and, you know, Luke establishing the you know, trying to start the Jedi again, and then you have Leia with the New Republic and all that, and raising Ben Solo, like, I just want that. And then for that, since it's animated, they could totally get, you know, actual voice actors, and it doesn't have to sound exactly like the original actors, as long as it captures the, the character, you know, because they, they didn't get Hayden Christensen for the Clone Wars, so. Nope. And that, and whoever that was, I forgot that actor's name. He did a, he also did Anakin in the, um, a couple of the video games that came out around that time. And he nailed it. Um, if anything, he was allowed to uh, convey even a little more emotion than Hayden Christensen was because 
it was just uh, voice acting. He in he could really ham up some of his lines and that sort of sold the anger that Anakin had. So that was, I mean, that was part of the character. We grew up with that. It wasn't just Hayden Christensen. It was also the voice actors. So they add a huge yeah, yeah. part into, because these characters are part of uh, like the cultural zeitgeist. Everyone knows who Anakin Skywalker and Darth Vader is and, the vo- yeah, the movies are what ultimately everything comes back around to. But if you're a true, if you're a big fan, the video games play a huge role in in um, that characterization, how we perceive them. Yeah, yeah, that was Matt Lancer. Yeah, he's, I liked how he uh, had to do like some of the movie, like actual movie dialogue in the, in the clone Last season of the Clone Wars. Yep. He also, um, yeah, they got he got a chance to do it in in the Lego Star Wars, the most recent Lego Star Wars game too. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. They recreated a lot of those cutscenes or scenes yeah. from the movies. Yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. Um. <clears throat> so, so you said that you've recently. Uh, talk about your like profession, professional voice acting. You said you're starting to do some professional stuff. Yeah. So in, I've been a, I, I say, I want to, I guess I can say professional voice actor, quote unquote, since at least 2014, that was my first uh, paid credit. Um, okay. But I really got the chance um, in 2020 after, um, my job, sadly, like a lot of people at the time, uh, I was laid off. So I got the chance um, to start voice acting a lot more from home. Um, I started taking um, a lot more classes um, remotely on Zoom. And it got me, uh, it gave me the opportunity to really kind of tap into my uh, emotional range a little bit, start bringing my performances to life a little bit more not just being like a, an impressionist. And, um, I got the chance to be in, um, last year I was in fire emblem heroes, um, which was part, um, it's part of the fire emblem series by Nintendo. I got the chance to work on the family guy mobile game, um, as the sound alike for He-Man, um, and I also had the chance in that same game to uh, serve as the sound alike for uh, one of James Earl Jones' characters. Um, they did this He-Man um, DLC, and uh, part of one of the characters was Thulsa Doom, which James Earl Jones played in the Conan the Barbarian um, movie. And the producer actually had seen one of my YouTube videos and instead of holding the audition, um, I did He-Man and then they wanted, um, turns out they needed a sound alike for the Doom character. So they were like, hey, do you want to do that too? And I said, hell yeah. So I have um, quote unquote professionally voice matched James Earl Jones. Um, it, it's not a mobile game. I don't know if anyone has if anyone like really pays attention to the credits for that stuff, but that was a huge honor. Um, and so, uh, the, I'm appearing, uh, as a guest, I'm guesting, uh, at a comic con at Springfield comic con. I live, um, in Massachusetts, uh, this weekend and some of those characters, people, uh, seem to like, so, um, and I, I like to think that if you listen to one of the performances from 2016 versus now, there's been a huge, like I've tried to expand the characterization, um, the emotion, the, I've tried to make Vader, I've tried to make it more uh, emotional, I guess, over yeah. the years. Yeah. I, yeah. I could definitely tell that. And, uh, you know, I think I've, as you know, I've, 
um, I've noticed like more how to like listen for that in in voice actors. I've gotten better at like you know oh well, the, yeah this is more of the emotion that we need and things like that. So yeah, it does. Um, it does well to not just you really don't want to just be oh I am your father. Um, you got to ask, and this is like you know, theater kid syndrome 101. <laughs> but you really got to ask, you know, what is this actually trying to convey to the audience? When v James Earl Jones says, I am your father, it's not just sounding scary. There's a point to it. It's to make Luke and by extension, the audience feel you know, just an example. It's to make them feel that shock. So what will that sh how do you convey how do you elicit that response those are the every single line you need to approach with that question in mind or else the audience is going to know that oh this is just this isn't genuine this is this this is just a person trying to imitate something so that's what i, I try to stay away from whenever i record for this or really anything it's just to make sure that it's authentic. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it, that's good. You know, Cause like a, a character like Vader, like, you know, he doesn't actually say a whole lot in the original trilogy. No. Uh, so like, isn't it in new hope? He yeah. only has seven minutes of screen time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you got to think like, well, how does he, you know, when he has these scenes where he's like talking to just a lot, a lot more than, like, you know, he's not just going to be, you know, <laughs> like all the time, just over the top. You know what I mean? Like, he's not just a villain. So, yeah. He's not just a villain to, with a scary, deep voice to exposit dialogue. No, he very much, yeah. while his original trilogy, his original trilogy characterization is very different from what we ultimately know Vader and Anakin become he is still very much his own character. That's the whole point of Return of the Jedi. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so you've done, so you've done now video games. Uh, and is that most of it just video games? Primarily, so vi primarily video games. Um, I've also done, uh, when I graduated, um, when I graduated from school, I had the chance to be um, a an assistant producer for uh, a local public radio station, and so I've done uh, radio taglines. Um, I've done small movie trailers. Um, I've done promos for. Uh, I, I did a pretzel commercial a few years ago, which was a whole lot of fun to do. So I've done. Um, um, I've done a, a fair, a fairly decent amount of different mediums, but video games is my, is my primary. Um, I'm trying to become, uh, I don't know, like no one wants to record an anime from remotely. And that totally makes sense. You can't, there's a lot that can go wrong with dubbing something from your closet. Um, but I'm trying to um, become like, I don't know, maybe as a part-time thing, I can't do this, um, remotely full-time, but if I can do like, uh, you know, anime background characters, I'm auditioning and just keeping my fingers crossed. Cool. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be cool. Yeah. I was going to ask you, like, do you think, um, yeah, like, do you see your, like, you see yourself eventually being more like uh, in like a like central character in anime or like other animation is that <laughs> somewhere you want to go i that's the dream um in the same way i'm sure it would be great for for you or maybe one of our um one of our editors producers to actually work on a star wars film that's the dream right <laughs> yeah but as long as I've got uh, a student loan to pay off, um, I probably can't 
make that huge jump just yet. I need, um, I need that nine to five. I need that coming in every week or every couple of weeks. Um, voice acting is, is just something I do not for fun because I, I do make a, a decent amount of money off of it, especially ever since the, um, the lockdowns happened. Um, but as of where I am now is it's the furthest I've ever been in the, I don't like calling it a side hustle, but it's the furthest I've ever been with it. So I'm content at the moment to, you know, do the video games as they come to keep working with great content creators who need, you know, a sound alike or a voice actor for their, um, projects. Um, I'm happy doing what I'm doing right now. And hopefully as the years go by and who knows, um, you know, I never thought I was going to voice match James Earl Jones or He-Man or be in a franchise like Fire Emblem. I never thought that was going to happen. Like, and because of the pandemic, as uh, people started going to remote voice acting, it became a more viable um, part-time job for a lot of people. And I've been extremely fortunate to, that it's worked out for me the way it has so far. And I'm just hoping it the good fortune continues. Yeah, nice, nice. And so, like, say you wanted to audition for some bigger budget animated show by uh, Disney, Warner Brothers, or, or something like that. Um, are those like uh, sort of more private auditions? Like, do you have to have like a like an agent that sets you up with that? Yeah, um, usually for for stuff of that scale, it's usually you're part of SAG, you're part of the union. Um, you have a great agent, and you get on what's called a a, a talent roster. Um, and usually those talent rosters are where those big studios like Disney or whomever um, source a lot of their their talent from. Um, and in a in a franchise like Star Wars, um, they usually the director has like a list or an actor that they uh, it's called a short list they'll privately audition them they'll set up screen test and line reads to sort of gauge their chemistry and it's a it's a very long process um because they want they're trying to make sure they get it right so where i stand like a, a remote voice actor like me i probably if that ever if i wanted to make that happen i would probably have to make the big move to new york or la and really start because networking at that level networking is also a huge part of of things yeah okay yeah so that would be you would basically have to just go full-time yeah and just try to audition yeah although and it's and matt that sounds hard it is hard, but also in Matt Sloan's case, where um, we, you know, Chad Vader, right? That old, yeah. that old series. Um, the director or producer, who or casting director, whoever it was, I remember reading. Um, this is a long time ago, but it's still probably somewhere on the internet. Um, the casting director, or whomever, did a interview and said you know, we couldn't, we didn't have the budget for James Earl Jones and maybe they just, I'm sure Scott Lawrence um, probably auditioned heavily, but they just said, you know, we, we couldn't find a voice that fit the version of Vader that we were going for. So they saw Chad Vader, this little, you know, high quality for the time, but looking back on it, you know, it's just this guy from like Wisconsin doing uh, a, an impression for a comedy series, but he liked what he heard. 
So Matt Sloan got his big break from a YouTube video. And a lot that stuff doesn't really it's it's a great story and it it allowed him to sort of do his own comedy thing while having the Darth Vader residuals to fall back on. But those stories of oh, this YouTube video going viral and all of a sudden you're you've got your dream job that doesn't really happen anymore because so many people now have a YouTube channel and content creation has become so streamlined that separating like those those sensational stories, they've just kind of lost some of that that luster. So they're going back to, you know, old school auditioning till you get it right. Or they go with computers. Or with computers like like the AI. Online Oh yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, they go with yeah. um, like the AI respeech or recreations. Yeah. Nice. Well, I hope you can continue. Uh, thank yeah, you. Well, yeah, thanks. I know it's a big dream. <laughs> it's a dream. Yeah. Um, you know, if if it's a dream. But at the same time, um, I, like I said, I've been fortunate. I've been a lot more fortunate than most because um, some people are still, I've known, I know a couple voice actors that are still started off on YouTube and they're still waiting for that, that one role that sort of opens the first door. And I've had roles that have gotten me into contact with people um, that work for Nintendo, that work for different dubbing distributors, stuff like that. Um, so I'm sure something might happen eventually that encourages me to maybe do it full time. But like I said, I'm content where I am at the moment. Because if you if you don't find some level of satisfaction with where you are currently, then you're in this for then you're in the you're in the game for all the wrong reasons so it's still a journey yeah so kind of you know it's kind of like uh you know you're happy if it happens but um you're not like banking everything on it you're still yeah happy with where you are yeah yeah because the last thing you want to you want to have happen and i know people where this has happened um you become so engrossed in that one thing you become hyper fixated on it um and you stop enjoying like i still love um you know the three new star wars that are coming out uh the mandalorian the dawn of the jedi the ray standalone movie that's not episode 10 but is also it's episode 10 come on <laughs> <laughs> um, I still love detaching myself from my own creative endeavors and just enjoying the movies for what they are. Um, I still love going on to Netflix and watching, you know, something like Vinland Saga or my old, my favorite episode of Dragon Ball Z and just sort of enjoying the product for what it is. Some people become so involved that they become almost too critical they oh it's oh ray shouldn't be doing that because it it contradicts with how i want it to be or how i would have done it so it it's it's good to have the dream but just remember there's just walk the line yeah right um speaking of dragon ball um have you ever heard of the 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 fan and comic Dragon Ball Multiverse? Uh, Dragon Ball Multiverse, I've heard of it. I have heard of it. Um, I, I have never, I don't think I've seen, I don't think I've seen it yet though. Okay. Yeah, see, I don't read a lot of fan fiction um, in general, mm -hmm. but I found that, I found their stuff years ago. I think they're based in France or something like that, but uh, yeah, basically it's just a fan comic where they just have like a 
a big multiversal tournament with like multiverse of Dragon Ball like universes stuff. And so and, do uh, they bring a bunch of characters from like Star Wars and other franchises into it? Uh, well, no, I mean, it, it's mostly like Dragon Ball stuff. And then they do like, oh, what if, uh, what if Goku actually um, never turned good and he just, you know, killed all humans instead? Or, like there's one universe like that and like another universe where all the Saiyans decided to fuse into one beam. And really? That's how they defeated Frieza, things like that. That's awesome. I, uh, I'm going to have to give that. I'm going to have to look that up because I've seen some of those, you know, those what if videos. But uh, this particular series sounds um, sounds interesting. Yeah, yeah. And I like it like you know, I, I've liked it enough that I keep going back to it. And the nice. only way that it's, I just don't do that with fan fiction. But uh, but yeah, like that's awesome. my point is like, but yeah, but like but, so like. When they made Dragon Ball Super, um, you know, I, I think I read something about like some of the guys that are making Dragon Ball Multiverse. They were sort of like, oh, you know, well, we don't like the direction, this, you know. Yeah, you know, they should have they should have like hired us or something like this is not what we consider Dragon Ball or whatever. And it's like, well, you know, kind of like what you're saying, like, yeah. You, you're getting too, like, into like too invested. No, you're not invested, but you know, it, you still you're still just a fan, and you should be able to just, you know, realize, okay, you know, um, it's okay that I don't like it as much as my version, but uh, anyway. And that's that's the sun. regardless. It's still I still wouldn't recommend it. But. It's good to be. I'll I'll, I'll definitely check it. I'll definitely check it out because I have heard of it and I've I've seen it in my recommended. I've, I've I know I've seen it in my recommended videos, so maybe this is the sign to give it a shot. Um, and it's it's good to be critical. It's good to be constructive. I mean, all in order to be creative, you need to be you need to know when to push it, and you need to know you know what makes a good movie good and what makes you know. A poor film poor just don't right, yeah. just don't get just don't go online and you know make a I mean some people do make a career out of just ripping other people's creations apart so yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah <laughs> I think George George Lucas was you know, they made that entire documentary, The People versus George Lucas. He said these yeah. movies are for 12 year olds. And I think it's good to, no matter how, what we all have our version of what we want Star Wars to be. Um, and I yeah. think when, you know, I'm, I'm 28, um, a court, you know, a quarter of my life is, is, you know, has run its course, but I still, I have my version of Star Wars. And when he says, oh, they're for 12 year olds, I'm sure that can rub people the wrong way. But, you know, it, if that's the intention, then maybe I shouldn't be taking these works. I shouldn't be taking them. I shouldn't put them on the same level as something like Citizen Kane or, or yeah. something that's trying to tell a deeper story. They're they're both entertainment, but it's very different what they're trying to do. Right. Yeah, I think it's it's healthy to, you know, be like, oh well this this Star Wars movie or whatever, like, you know, I didn't like everything about it. I wish they did this this instead, but also at the same time just kind of accepting it, like, well, you know, there's still a lot about it that I enjoy and I'm sure, you know, it, they're going to, I'm sure the next movie or whatever will be more what I'm, might be more what I'm looking for instead of just like, well, you know, everything Disney, Star Wars sucks. Like, so, <laughs> but I mean, it, it, there's so much Star Wars now, like 
you're not going to like everything and there's something for everyone so exactly although yeah it's i'm sure there's we could probably have an entire separate conversation about the creative process because that disney pursued um right which in of it that but that's it is also a business that's the business side of things and there's uh, stockholders and people's live like people's livelihoods are at stake with a franchise as big as star wars so if anything disney has given me more appreciation for fan works because fan works are allowed to still have that quote unquote creative integrity um whereas the yeah. disney stuff it's now just it's a lot more business driven and disney plus has allowed some of that creativity but it all it's still ultimately beholden to that sequel trilogy that they created so it still has to pass through that process it has to pass through well we're telling this story but it has to build up to the ray and finn and poe because it's whether we like it or not it's their story so yeah definitely have you have you seen andor i have not not yet okay yeah that one is like you know obviously star wars seen Rogue one. is for children mainly but yeah okay yeah but andor feels very much to me like star wars for adults and not not in like a r-rated way but uh like it does it's like a lot more it gets more into the kind of like bigger themes and uh you know just like the like the you know the realities of war and things like that but We're bringing uh, the war back yeah, like to star one, wars yeah yeah like that one does not feel out of everything since uh you know it feels more like rogue one or just something well even more than rogue one it feels more like something that was like less studio interference it's just like you know make make a good story like that one's i really like it so yeah and you know those sadly you know we all know the ending to rogue one you're when you have a closed off ending you're allowed to take that you can take that risk um isn't it andy circus right he he plays a character in andor yeah yeah i've seen um so i've seen scenes of it and it looks it looks a lot grittier than what um yeah especially what the sequel what disney's sequel trilogy is it it seems a lot riskier which is good for a franchise that's been around since the 70s yeah 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 and like you know let me just say like i i do like most of what disney has done like you know i like the sequels for what they are it's not exactly what i would have done but you know it that, that's okay um i but we've yeah, made peace. Um, I definitely and or we've like, made our peace with that. Yeah, I've made peace with it. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, and and or is like really worth it. Like, even if like if somebody who's not a Star Wars fan and they just like political injury or whatever, I'd say watch Andor. Like just That's that. the one you'll like. So, yeah. Oh yeah, so Let's see. What are, what do you look forward to as a fan in uh, Star Wars? You said you're, you're looking forward to the uh, Dawn of the Jedi. Dawn of the Jedi, because I can't help it. I I loved the lightsaber fights. I loved um, I loved reading the comic books for the old canon. Um, I loved the idea of the you know the we've got these ancient warriors who you know this with this spiritual affinity and all that stuff like i i was ri i loved just the idea of the philosophies clashing with the lightsaber fights um i don't know who the first jedi is but 
I think there's a lot of interesting possibilities that um, that movie that movie can tell. Um, so I'm really pumped for that. And also the uh, the Mandalorian uh, conclusion movie. Um, that's probably going to be good too. Really stumped yeah. on how, what they're going to do with the Ray standalone movie, but Daisy Ridley deserves at least one more shot with maybe something. Okay, we know her backstory. She's a Palpatine. She's met the Skywalkers. She's forged her own path. Now that we actually know who Ray is, what kind of story can they tell now that we're not just mystery boxing it? And I, I like how they're, it seems like they're, they're really taking their time with that to find, you know, what, what they want to do with it. And yeah, I, cause I, I like Ray as a character and, uh, overall. So I think there's a lot of potential there. And then for the, for Donna, the Jedi, I'm, you know, obviously excited too, cause I don't think in legends, even like, I don't think they ever said like, who was the first Jedi, like the very first one. So I'm just super curious, like how they do that, like how they discover the force or, you know, how that all comes together. Like it's, will they finally do what George Lucas wants? And will they finally tell the story of like the wills, the first ever force beings, um, how yeah. they first came about, um, you know that that's that seems easy, and maybe Disney doesn't go that route. Um, the guy who directed Logan, the X Men movie, it's it's him. I forgot his name, but it's the guy who did Logan. So he's got a decent resume so far. So it should be, yeah, should be a good. I'll pay to see it. Yeah, yeah, that's James Mangold, and he did the the new uh, Indiana Jones. Oh, he did the new Indiana Jones. Also. Yeah, I liked it. Well, I liked that one more than I liked Crystal Skull. So he's already got he's got that going for yeah, him. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. So that yeah, the, the the wills. You know, I feel like. George Lucas doesn't even know what he was going to do with that. So, like, that's really tricky because half of me is like, would be really excited to see them do something like that. But then if it's like, uh, like, that just seems really risky because, like, if they don't make it, like, interesting enough, then I just feel like that would be harder for me to get over <laughs> Right, but uh, that, that's yeah. the one one of the few things that sort of un that hasn't been touched since the seventies. The wills, like what there's been stories, there's been comics. I think it might have been mentioned in like a throwaway line in Rogue One, but they haven't actually yeah. whatever they are, they haven't been shown on screen. So people will definitely yeah. be intrigued by that. Yeah, that that and that and like a Yoda species. We don't know what that you know their name or the planet, all that. And then then like it seems like Han Solo's backstory is kind of even though they did Solo and stuff, like we don't know much about his parents and things like that. Like there's still, and I think that's what that's that's what brings people back to Star Wars. There's so there's still so much story to be told. Um, and every movie gives that small glimmer of hope, even if you're, if it's not your favorite character, like, Oh, this is what they did. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely a lot for them to go with. And, uh, I want to bring it back. I want to, and it's, it's a little late where I am, so I don't want to go, I don't want to hold up too much of your time. Um, yeah, no worries. Yeah. But let's, I want to bring it back to Vader real quick. Um, and there's, we all probably have heard this, 
piece of trivia before. Um, Lucas wanted Orson Welles to be the OG Vader voice, but didn't feel like, you know, he probably couldn't afford him, but also Orson Welles was probably too well-known at the time. Um, but imagine how different it could have been if they got, at the time, the literally biggest actor in all of Hollywood to be part of, like, this little dinky sci-fi series. Like, it just would have been so different. Oh, huh. that's interesting. I didn't know that. Oh, you didn't know that? Yeah. Oh. No. That, um, Orson Welles was Lucas's... Um, original choice to play Darth Vader, but, um, you know, they couldn't for various reasons yet. He couldn't do it. And ultimately James Earl Jones, I think it was his role in, uh, maybe the great white hope. Maybe it had not come out just yet, but, um, they just needed a voice at the time. And, you know, he, James Earl Jones, came in at the last second and knocked out all his recordings in a day. So that's, um, I think that's what every actor and every creative type is waiting for, that, that YouTube video that, or that just that one thing that puts them on the map with just letting the stars align and just let it all take off from there. Yeah. That's interesting. And for me, for me, um, you know, when you, I think it definitely was a YouTube message. When you sent me that YouTube DM, um, you know, I just did the impression video and I thought that was going to be it. I was hoping that some maybe Star Wars content creator who had a grander vision than, you know, just a, a voice actor doing an impression um, you know, had, a, I wanted to be a part of that in some capacity. And so, yeah, when you, uh, came around, it sort of actually was like, oh, sweet. This is actually, uh, what I've been, I've been wanting to join this fandom and create stuff for the Star Wars fandom for a long time, but I didn't know how to go about it. So I, it just, that's what it's all about. The stars just have to, you got to put in the work, but the stars also have to align. Nice. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I'm glad that, uh, you know, fans like us can still, you know, <laughs> can still make some interesting, uh, content that, you know, that's a great thing about YouTube and the internet right now is we can, we can tell our, you know, do something interesting with what yeah, we like. We can tell our stories with the Star Wars banner, um, and Disney can tell their their stories. <laughs> yeah, and to be fair, like I'm taking, I'm adapting their stories. <laughs> exactly. It, it all it's just letting the stars align. Great. Well, it's been. Uh, it's been, been a great blast. to have this it's chat. It's been a blast. I loved it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to more, more, uh, more of the, the Dark Lord of the Sith and the Vader mm -hmm. 2017 series and, and War of the Bounty Hunters. And there's a lot, a lot of Vader still. I feel bad like giving you all these Vader lines that he's just in everything. So <laughs> oh, he's the mo. I I don't mind it at all. I love being a part of this. I love recording um, when time when I have the time because I hate just recording stuff and, you know, just to get it done. I like, obviously there's deadlines, but I like, let me sit down and actually read through this script. What is the character saying before me? And, you know, it, it, earlier on in the podcast, we mentioned uh, it, it's it's all about that authenticity. So uh, there is more stuff in the works. Um, yeah. I, I'm not gonna say what that is, but um, I've been I read through the comments of every Vader video, and people are always positive. They love it. So um, more stuff is in the works. Nice. Yeah. And do you have anything you want to plug, like your your YouTube channel, or is, I, I feel like you just kind of 
is that just something you kind of do for fun whenever um, you feel like throwing it up in a, a voice? Yeah, or? it's um, I'm unscheduled. I used to try to do a video once a week, but now um, it's uh, you can follow me at uh, K Herbs Vo. That's uh, K U R B Z uh, Vo um, on Twitter and YouTube, and uh, Star Wars Audio Comics is uh, where I like is where I do all my Star Wars stuff. All right. Well, well you have a good night, and uh, yeah, looking more forward to, to more Vader. Oh, yeah. Have a good one. Right. And may the may force, be, force with you. be with you. <laughs> yeah, we had to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Have a good one. Peace. All right. Peace. Uh, Darth Vader. Darth Vader lines. <laughs> yes, perfect. <laughs>